Hello, Akai fans. Now, it's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you. Um, I've done a follow-up to this video now because I did this video about a year ago. I bought an Akai S1000. Whoa. S1000 sampler um, because I want to get it out of the way because it's taking up loads of space in my garage. Now, I bought it about a year ago and I did a video on it then which took me ages little with proper lighting and all that kind of good things. This just recorded on my phone because I know a lot of people watched it, about two and a half thousand people, and it's one of the biggest views I've ever had on my YouTube channel. So it only seems fair that I actually put the information up about what I've done to it so far and I'm going to finish it off. There will be a part three that won't take as long. The last couple of bits are on order and I'm waiting for them now. But what we're going to do is have a dive into this one, remind you what was wrong with it unless you want to watch the old video again, and I'll tell you what I've done to rectify it because believe it or not, it's working now, it's working fine. There's just a few upgrading things I need to make to it to make it work. So let's have a look at what's been going off. So on the front, nothing's changed at the minute. That's all as it was. It still needs cleaning and repairing. But obviously, I have fixed this backlight that will now investigate a bit more from the back. So when I got it, there's two things wrong with it. What, well, there's loads wrong with it. It wouldn't turn on. So that's pretty much one thing. And that's loads of it. So I had a bit of a dig into it. And I took out a few odds and sods and did a bit of testing and whatnot. Don't kill yourself if you're going to do that yourself, yeah? Always conduct a always can sort of qualify a person but what was basically wrong with it was is this transformer this power supply should i say it gives the five volts that the electronics works on that is an absolute beast that is and this capacitor had leaked and it's all manky you can see all the goo on the bottom of it and stuff like that that had all leaked into this part of the case and it sat on this bracket here which i'll probably get some b-roll off so i can show you close up you mightn't be watching that now anyhow i swapped that out for a power supply which is in the first video I've not rewatched really the first video, and I know for a fact there's a link on the first video to it. But if you want to pause it now, that's the one I used there. So if you want to buy that one and replace it, that's fine. However, there are a couple of little bits I'll let you know about now. On here, there's a fuse, and I'm not sure if that's, that's the outgoing way or the incoming way. But in here, there's a fuse just here for the incoming main to this transformer. So I assume that this fuse is the outgoing fuse. So what I've done is I've made a modification to mine, which I'm going to show you up close, to add that fuse, which is what I'm going to do in part three and waiting for that hold of that fuse to arrive. So bear in mind, if you take out the power supply that comes with the sampler and replace it, the five volt side might not be fused. So we're going to tackle that little problem. But yeah, the power supply is a simple case of getting the power supply or a similar power supply to what I've used putting 240 volts into it or 110 or whatever it is in your wherever you live and taking the five volts out back out to the five volt line which clips onto the pcb just here you're probably watching some b-roll of that anyway and that's it that brought it back to life however the second problem was the backlight on the keypad uh, the screen so on the screen on the front i just showed you the backlight didn't work this is what runs the backlight. This is a phospholuminescent strip. It works like a fluorescent light, and this was basically fucked. So uh, there was loads of to it. There's all sorts of bits in here I'll try and find. So this can be knackered. You can buy these on eBay, but this can be knackered as well. This is the little module that runs it, although it's normally attached to a PCB. I've taken that off because it's still in there. I've used that to remount what I did. Well, I can't be arsed with this crap because this is old technology. You can't reuse it. Now, I found an excellent website, which I'll link to in the video, which suggested, suggested that you buy yourself one of these. This one's um, in bits. I believe this, and I'll link to the website, so I'm not nicking that guy's credit, he did it. This is a backlight for uh, iPhone. So it's a load of LEDs sandwiched in between light reflective material. And what I did was, I got that, well I didn't, I copied some else's instructions, which I'll show you in a second. I got that, and I just chopped it. And I chopped it. It almost fits as well. It's the right length. It's exactly the right length. It's unbelievably exactly the right length. I kept that little bit there, look, where the power goes in. And I put that against that and I chopped it down there. And then I soldered some wires onto that and used it. Now, I'm not going to tell you how I did that because the instructions that I got to do it off this website, which are here somewhere. Here, look. If you find the website, it'll look like this. Yeah. The, the instructions I got off that website were absolutely bang on. Obviously, I've got a power supply and all that kind of stuff. And I broke the first one I did because it's some pretty nifty soldering. But get a couple of them and you should be able to replace the backlight with a LED screen. Yeah, and I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks to do with that now. So let's go inside and look. But yeah, that was basically it. That's all that's wrong with mine. The power supply was gone. The 5 volt line power supply was gone. It was dusty and crappy inside. So I got rid of that. Got a new power supply. 
And then I did my own mod, swapping this backlight for the iPhone one using the instruction there, which I'll link to in the description because like I say, the instructions are absolutely bang on. But yeah, let's have a nose inside and I'll point you around some of the things I've done and some of the things I've got to do. Then in the next video when the bits turn up, I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's finished. But I do feel sorry for you because you're hanging off me here. People keep messing me when you're doing part two, blah, blah, blah. And that's all that's wrong with mine. So I'm going to stick it out now. So let's have a look at the front. Stand by for some serious wobbling then. So here's what's happening inside, yeah. So the mains comes in here and it goes down to this thing that distributes the mains. I think there's like a little um, interference choke down here and stuff. And down there, there's various cables that distribute the 240 volts around. There's also a fuse. So I've taken the 240 volts here and this bracket here is what the original power supply was on. And I've mounted my new power supply to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip it on its side so we can see into it better. So now you can see the power supply that I fitted back onto its original bracket, although I think that's in a different orientation. This power supply did not have an earth connection like the old one did, so I just added my own earth connection to this earth point down here. In fact, I ain't even connected that up yet. I'm going to do that. The mains comes in on the right connections and the low voltage comes out here. Now, my low voltage connections then come through this loom that I've made, this new loom, and come to here. And that's the power from the 5 volt power supply. And this is the power... To the new backlight because the backlight originally came off the pcb just down here and went over here to the inverter you'll see my new book converter there on the old inverter board there was a lot of talk online about the fact that when this light blew up it would wipe out the board well i don't want this board to get wiped out so now my backlight which you can see here is in there comes down this wire here comes through this connection here, let me move this IDC connector out of here for you. Yeah, my new one comes down here and connects onto the old board. And I've made my book connector sit on the old board. So my backlight comes from there onto the board through the existing plug like it always did. Then I've got a book converter here, but I don't want this blowing up my main board. So here I've taken the old power supply and rather than connecting it out to this bit here, I've extended it and I've taken it, let's put that back, down to here. So over here, I've got a neutral going to my tw uh, 5 volt power supply there. And you'll see here, there's this orange cable here. And that is going to be fused. So you'll see just down here. So sorry, I've, I've made it more tidy now. So this power supply, instead of going to the board here and risking knackering the board, because that's all it does is take 5 volts from it is I've taken it through this red and black cable here up into my new loom. In here, the neutrals connect to the power supply directly and up here is for a fuse for just the backlight. So I'm going to put, I think, a 250 milliamp fuse on that. This is my red coming from a power supply and that orange is going to pick up a, a 5 volt rail common off this. And then I'm going to connect my new power supply. It's going to have a fuse in it which will feed the main board through this one. And the backlight is going to have its own fuse, which is going to pick up through this one. I'm going to mount them onto the back of the unit there. So they won't be original. There'll be a power supply fuse there for the outgoing 5 volt rail. And below that, there'll be a backlight rail. The idea being that if somehow this book connector blows up or any of my new stuff blows up, the existing board will be protected because I haven't put any of my new electronics onto that board. So, yeah, that's where I'm at at the minute. I had to do a few repairs down here. I had to do a few repairs to these pots because someone took the front off and ripped the cables out. They've all been repaired. All the audio sections have been cleaned out of there. All the boards been cleaned, uh, air dusted off. And then I've got these four cars there in my one. I'm not sure what they're for, but they're still there. The original AC power supply is still here. There's a close-up of the book connector for everyone that's wondering what I've done. Focus. Focus. They're, they're freely available off eBay. That one's tweaked. I think it's about 30 volts. And then... Yeah, that's what I've done. That's all I've done. So it didn't take a lot to get it back going again. I have powered it up. I have it running through some temporary fuse, but I didn't want to blow it up. So yeah, when the I'm getting some fuse carriers that go in here that I'm going to drill through and mount all this on. And when I get that mounted, I'm going to put it all back together. I'm going to give it a clean and I'm going to run it. So there it is. That's where I'm at with it. There will be a part three and I'll show you it all working and that all the repairs work. Sorry, it's not got the values of video quality and sound quality of the last video. I very much made the video last time because I was fixing this anyway. I had a load, load of new camera equipment and sound equipment and that I wanted to try out because I make other videos as you'll see on this channel, yeah. But I didn't want to leave you hanging, so I'll just record this on my iPhone. 
hopefully those fuse cars will be here in the next couple of weeks because they're on the slow boat from China. I know it works, but I'm not going to spoil it now. I'm going to get it all back working, put my fuse in. I'll put a little diagram up in the next one of our wired it all up and all that kind of thing. And hopefully, if you've got a problem with, I think it might be a lot of this range used, this um, fluorescent thing, and a lot of the power supplies go in, you can fix it yourself. Just be aware that these power supplies do leak nasty cack out of the capacitors when they go, so I make sure you give it all a good clean inside. It's well worth cracking yours open to see if you've got anything going off like this, because uh, apparently, like I say, when these blow up, they can wipe out the five volt line and the thing. So yeah, I hope that's helpful to you. If you are an Aki aficionado and you know your way around this, because I don't, I'm not a studio engineer, I don't work with music. My brother's got me onto this because he's, he's in a band and stuff. Um, if you've got any more tips for it or not, those cards in the back are, them ones there, look. If you've got them four cards in the back or anything like that are, let me know. If you are interested, once this is working, it'll be going on eBay because suddenly these things seem to work an absolute fortune. Uh, I'm going to stick on eBay for a fair price. I've, I've had some fun with it. I'll fix it. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in part three. It won't be as long as this because it'll be a quick rundown out there, show you what's going off. And if you've got any questions, stick around, I'll try and answer them. Thanks very much. See you later. Thanks for holding out for a year to watch this video. Bye.